short, sharp, to the point. Maybe to the point, to the point. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hello, ladies, gentlemen, children, monkeys of all ages. Welcome back to another Short, Sharp, and to the Point. Today, we are going to get in on another prototype. Oh, yeah. You know what's up? This is where it's coming from. In rigging knives. First, we are going to take a look at what this would look like in a rotation. So, let's toss out that Forrest Hanks, Hank, and take a look at this in riggy jersey prototype here in a second. Also had Spyderco Little Native. And rolling with this custom fixed blade. We'll talk about that one later. I don't have all the details on that one handy, actually, before I grabbed it. Um, but yeah, this is what it would look like as part of a rotation. So small to medium fixed blade, small folder, and a medium to large folder. That's it. That's what's up. So what can I tell you about this knife? Well... This is one of, I believe, three prototypes we've got rolling around the Pass Around group right now. This is the first production design by Nick Riggy. Uh, in Riggy Knives is Nick Riggy. I believe he's out of New Jersey because the name of this knife is called the Jersey. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, he's out of Jersey. Um, this is the blasted and blasted set up. Um, there's also a stonewashed and blasted, I believe, or stonewashed and stonewashed, and then a satin and a blasted version running around. So you may start seeing a lot of videos about these prototypes, just to let you know. There are going to be changes from what this prototype currently is into what it will be when it's finalized. Currently, 14C28 and blasted blade on this one is going to be either M390 or 20CV steel on the final production piece. Look at that logo on the pivot. The way the pivot stands up, the collar around it is milled into the actual titanium. All of these screw heads are going to be countersunk further so that they will not stand proud the way they do now. This pocket clip is going to be, instead of bent titanium, is going to be milled titanium. And those screws, all the body screws are going to be T8 as well as the pivot. So it'll be one tool to take down everything on the knife. Have a titanium backspacer. It is full thickness titanium. There is no milling in there. This thing weighs 3.7 ounces. You've got about a three and an eighth inch long blade, about two and seven eighths of that is uh, cutting edge. Um, just over four inches in the handle and about three and five eighths uh, grippable area. So that's a little, I know it's going to be a little small for some people. And this knife is not a huge knife by a long shot. Uh, you can see what some of my, the usual suspects in this size range are over here. So, one of the things that's going to blow your mind is who this knife is made by. And there may be one knife kind of standing out over here. That, uh, that is not in this size range that just doesn't make sense. And that's because... <laughs> This knife is being OEM'd by Shieldon. That's right. Yeah, Shieldon. I didn't even know they did OEM work. And I definitely didn't know they did OEM work in this kind of materials. Um, this level of fit and finish is impressive. Very impressive. Um, 
have a hardened lock bar with an over travel stop built into it. Um, it's smooth. I mean, smooth. Just the little detail. Like I said, the way the the area around that pivot stands proud um, on both sides and is just perfectly milled. All the edges are knocked down. Everything is nice and flush. I'm just... I don't... I mean... At first, I may not have been super excited about the overall aesthetic of it. It's a kind of knife-shaped knife, uh, as many out there are. Um, once I put it in my paws, oh, buddy. Um, the, the way these waves across the grip area work, uh, they absolutely work for my hands. And let me tell you, uh, my pinky may just barely be on there, but this thing feels so secure, so perfect in hand. Um, if my chunk were here, my asymmetrical chunk, um, the smoothness, the narrowness, but the, the contouring, everything about this reminds me a lot of my chunk just in a much smaller form factor. The quality, the fit and finish, the materials, all of that on this one. <laughs> I mean, and it's going to get better from this. And this is going to, uh, he, the target price on this is around $200. Let's get the comparisons rolling. We'll start at the affordable end and work our way down. So, budget-wise, we have the QSP Penguin. Coming in at under $40, $32 roughly for this version of it. And the Beyond EDC Eurus. This is their budget line. This one comes in at $40 to $50. So this is very much a, a, the blue collar heart and soul of this. This is blue collar still, but it is the classy blue collar side, similar to this. If these weren't exactly the same length, I could easily see carrying both of these together. This is a classy worker. It's just, I don't know how else to put that. Falling in that same vein, we've got the Kvist variant. You're talking about a knife that is that $70, $80 range here along with the Asher, straight out of Pittsburgh. Slightly, ever so slightly longer, but nicely contoured. The materials aren't as nice as the Riggy, but still, it feels great in hand. It does all the things you're gonna need it to do. And, oh man, all three of these knives again. I love this setup. All of these knives, all the knives I'm showing you are knives that I have a lot of love and respect for as far as their position in my rotation. Um, and I think I feel similarly strongly, even though it's not as fidgety, about the Riggy jersey here. Now we're going to step up into some true peers in terms of price at $145 when you can catch them in and they were just in at White Mountain Knives. The Two Sons TS-264 going from the worst pocket clip ever put on a knife to one of the best I've experienced um, both in M390 and Titanium. Um, both just really, really nice knives. Um, the, the review on this one is coming up, and I absolutely love this knife. That is what I'm trying to drive home here. And then the Nimble. Come on, man. Um, you want to talk about class and fit and finish and materials. It's 50% more, though. This is a $300 knife, a $200 knife, and a $145 knife. The Nimble, because it's a $300 knife, tends to be a bit more pocket jewelry for me. Um, I take this out when I just want to go out and have something cool to flip around and hand to friends so they can experience it. That's where the Nimble kind of occupies in my collection, unfortunately. 
but notice this you see that this kind of saddle back here um, the minimal jumping in the front this is a language that is starting to um, starting to speak to me I'm starting to pick up uh, the small nuances like that little saddle right behind the pivot things like that um, are water making smaller knives more comfortable for me so uh, that Nick nailed it on this one uh, his very first production just it just sinks into my hand and it is so thin and slicey. I'm going to tell on myself because we're not supposed to be cutting anything with these knives. Um, the pass around knives and I would assume especially a prototype. But I had to know. This thing, it's 119 thousandths thick back here at the pivot. So it's 119 thousandths thick here on the flat. But it's another one of those blades where it feels like my fingers are saying I should be able to feel my other finger that finger there It is so thin by the time you get down to the edge. I had to know I had to slice some paper and this thing just Glides through paper. I'm like, oh man Okay, so slicey classy uh, capable uh, if $200 is in your price range, OEM by Shield On, which still blows my mind, uh, that the makers of the Bulbasaur also put this out. Um, the Bulbasaur is a cool knife, don't get me wrong, um, but this just it checks a ton of boxes for me, and it feels great doing it. So. If any of that speaks to you, keep an eye out for this. Go follow Nick on Instagram. Uh, what was it Knife Shop by Nick? All one word. I'll I'll link it in the description for you. I am going to be saving up to probably grab one of these myself, so I'll be able to hopefully do a long-term review for you. Because um, yeah, this one, this one, this one caught my attention um, in much the same way that the asymmetrical chunk did. Very good job, Nick. Uh, thank you for putting these in for us to take a look at in the pass around. Um, again, I look forward to checking one out, hopefully getting one when these come out myself. And uh, good luck to you, man. I think you, uh, you're knocking it out of the park on your first attempt uh, at a production knife. So that's it. That's all I've got for you guys. Uh, so until I see you again, and I do hope I see you again, stay well, be kind, do good. That's it. This is Grumpy, and I'm sadly going to pack this up and send it out to somebody else. Womp, womp, womp. Anyway, I'll see you guys soon. Peace out. Holy crap.